Hello there, we're going to try this again. I think this is working now. Yeah, I think I was just did our little introduction a few minutes ago, but it doesn't didn't seem to be doing anything. It was still whirring a lot. So uh, here we are now. Hopefully you can hear us and see us. Uh, welcome in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are going to be joining together. Uh, Jackie is here with us, and we're going to um, open God and, and have uh, a little time around the Bible. Uh, Tonight, if you can hear us and see us, please leave us a greeting, a message, uh, a, a reaction, uh, an emoji, a wave, whatever you want to do, just so that we know that you are there and you can see us, because as I say, I think we had a few technical difficulties before. Now, if this is the first time you found us, you can find us at ggechurch.co.uk and also on uh, YouTube at Greater Grace Evangelical Church and at GGE Church on Facebook. Uh, you can email us also at uh, Greater Grace for Chester at live.co.uk so uh, those are the ways you can get in touch get involved this coming week you can be even more involved uh, we are planning to meet on Sunday at 11 o'clock in our premises and we're planning around 2 o'clock in the afternoon to be on the village green in Backford where <coughs> where we will sing some carols and there may well also be performances um, so if you are intrigued by that and you would like to hear something of our Christmas celebration that's the, uh, Sunday the 19th this coming Sunday uh, at the in front of Backford Hall is the best way to describe it the green in front of Backford Hall um, in Chester so come and join with us. Uh, we'd be glad to have you uh, come and, and sing. You'd be invited back if you are happy to come and uh, partake of a beverage and maybe even a mince pie. We'll see whether we can stretch to that. So that's the weekend um, uh, prayer tomorrow night as well. Oh, no, actually not prayer tomorrow night. We have the school play tomorrow night. Uh, and then at 7 o'clock um, the, the school play is on. And then also um, there is a craft day on Monday. Uh, Monday is the 20th, 20th actually. So um, that is at the school from 10 till 12 in the morning. So that's if you're uh, not at school, if you're not at work, and you would like to spend a couple of hours and do something creative, then come and join with our, our school staff and some of our church members who will be at the school in Backford again uh, with uh, some craft uh, facilities for you to make things uh, and just be together. Uh, it's good to do these things occasionally. So that's what we have lined up. Christmas morning, you can join us as well at 10 o'clock. There won't be uh, a service on Boxing Day. Um, but on Christmas morning we will be meeting at 10 so um, come and join with us then uh, we're always glad to have you so tonight let's get going let's pray and let's see what God does with it uh, before that one other announcement that while well, I think about it some of you may have heard this already uh, but we now have a date for uh, the funeral of, of Janice Trotter she uh, is going to uh, have her funeral service at um, 12 o'clock on Friday the 24th of December Christmas Eve it's going to be in Flintshire at the, uh, the crematorium there near Northup so if you need any more details uh, please feel free to get in touch with us uh, for those of you who, who knew Janice and loved her it will be a, a chance for us to celebrate her life, her faith, and also just say goodbye. Uh, but we know that we will meet again, because we know that her soul, her spirit, uh, is with the Lord. And there is that confidence, there is that comfort to know these things. So uh, please, uh, yes, be uh, 
be welcome to come and, and ask more details if you would like them. Those are the details we just heard today. So let's pray and give this time to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We worship you today. And Lord, we just want to lift up uh, different situations, Lord, for you. Thank you, Lord, that you are a, a, a God of, of grace, a God of mercy. We pray for the, the funeral announcements we just uh, mentioned, Lord. We ask that you would really comfort the family. Now, be with Kyle and his family and uh, Charmaine and each of uh, the family members there. Everyone that loved Janice, Lord. Friends as well. We think particularly of Anne tonight as well. And just really encourage now. We think also of others who have lost loved ones recently, be with Nigel tonight, and uh, Romanka and Martina, and various other ones, Lord. Comfort each one, Lord, this season. Touch those that need a healing touch. Lord, we pray for uh, Richard Gilsey, Ruby's grandson. We pray for uh, Jane and also for Tristan for healing them. Guide us while we pray for any others that need your healing. Again, for Daphne, uh, Sidoni's cousin. Touch there, Lord, we pray. Come through, Lord, with miracles for those that need them. Thank you, Lord, that you are the God who does miracles. Thank you, Lord, that we have heard of miracles even recently. And Lord, we just give you glory now. Thank you for this time, Lord. Bless, uh, bless our weekend plans, Lord, we pray. Uh, be at the center of each one. Bless the play tomorrow night. Uh, bless each of the performers. Those that sing. Just really cover now, Lord, we pray. And touch tonight, Lord, we pray. Fill it with your spirit. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> okay, tonight we're going to look at uh, the book of Isaiah. We're going to look at Isaiah 55 and just read a couple of verses from there. Verse 10 says, For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. So shall my word be, that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing where I sent it. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for these words. Thank you for what we are in. The season of Advent as we focus on your first coming. But Lord, thank you for every blessing that you've given us. Thank you for your life, for your truth, for all of your ways, Lord. Fill us tonight with your spirit and anoint these words, we pray. We are nothing and we, are, we need you, Lord. Your word is power, your word is life to us. Encourage us now, Lord, we pray. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay. So. Of God. This is a, a subject. A big subject. Uh, the word of God. Sent forth. To accomplish something uh, the word of God that does
doesn't return void. The word of God that has purpose. Often at this time of the year, not just at this time of the year, every time of the year, but especially for this time of the year, people often read from John's Gospel, chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. And in Him was life, and the life was the light of man. And the light shineth in the darkness. And the darkness comes. I learned those words when I was a child, uh, and uh, maybe we have heard them before. Maybe we are for very familiar with them. But the word of God, God has a plan, and you know the plan works God's way God has a plan for our life God has a plan for this world God has a plan for many things so often we come along with our own ideas and our own plans and our own ways um, but as the verse before says where we read tonight it's like his ways are not our ways his thoughts are not our thoughts and sometimes these things are very different from the way we would like them to be. But God has always got a plan. There's one way that things work. And often we find that there are other ways that you try to do things and they don't work as well. God sent his word to the earth. God sent his word to the earth as the Lord Jesus Christ. The living word of God. The word became flesh. That's who Jesus was. He was the embodiment, the living embodiment of God's word. God's nature, God's character, God's commandments, God's law, God's truth. God's love. That's who the Lord Jesus Christ was. That's who he still is today. And uh, we see this, that the word was sent into the earth. And the word was sent for the purpose. Now, again, a verse that I often like to quote to people. It's in uh, Psalm 107.20. And there it says, He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions you know we we like to think of that that actually there is healing in God's word there is healing when we read God's word there is healing when we hear God's word preach there is healing, hear, healing when we hear God's word faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God and there's healing in the word of God when we realize when we discover who God really is and when we discover who what God has really done for us that he has laid down his life for us that he's paid a price for us that he's forgiven us that he's reunited us with God that we were estranged from that he has made all things new and that he has made things right again there is great healing when we start to read and discover God's word we discover life, we discover truth we discover a, a new way of looking at, at this world and its perspective God sent his word and healed them wow. but not just healed them as well delivered them from their destructions wow could we have something that destroys us you know what our failings destroy us our character traits destroy us our sin destroys us doesn't it really 
how often have we seen that? Somebody's constant anger, somebody's constant lust, somebody's constant addiction, somebody's constant fear, whatever it is, the bad habits, they destroy us. But you know what? God sent his word, God sent his son, God sent the Lord Jesus Christ to the earth as we remember this Christmas time. And he healed them and delivered them from their destructions also. And we all need that. There isn't anyone who doesn't need that. We all desperately need healing and deliverance. And the word is sent out with purpose. There's a purpose for the rain, isn't there? God sends rain for a purpose. It waters the fields, it causes things to grow. It adds life. There's a purpose for the snow. It makes the Christmas cards look Christmassy. No, but actually, you know, there is a purpose for the snow. Um, it's amazing how well designed our planet is that God devised this way of storing water with slow release because we know what it's like if it, lots of water comes down at, at one time it's like well there's floods but actually God came up with a, a, an amazing way of putting the water out there into the landscape in the form of ice and snow that it could be slowly released over time by melting, thawing and, and uh, trickling down. There's a purpose for these things. And they don't return. We don't see snow flicking off the floor and going back up into the sky, do we? We don't see rain going from a puddle and shooting back up into a cloud. We should be very thankful for that, really, because you think about it, it, it would probably go up your nose if it happened that way. And there's all sorts of things that actually would be very unpleasant. It would go up your trouser leg and all sorts of things. And, it, you know, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be very, very nice, really, would it? But actually, you know, God has designed it that it doesn't do that. It doesn't return back up the way that it came. Ah, you say, but I know about the water cycle and I know the scientific and it does return eventually. Yeah, but it doesn't go back up. There's a cycle. It's going in one direction. It's flowing down to the sea and then being evaporated back up that way. You know, maybe it gets evaporated into the air at times from the land as well, but, but it doesn't go back up the way that we see it come down. There's a purpose for the rain, there's a purpose for the snow. And it doesn't return that way. There's no going backward. But it waters the earth, it adds the life. It brings the bud. It's unique. It quenches thirst. It gives water to the animals, birds to the life, to the fungi, to the trees, to every living creature, the water is there and it, and it causes it to flourish and gets it to be nourished as well. And what is the, the purpose of it? There's two things mentioned here, uh, that it gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Think about that as well, seed to the sower. The sower needs seed, doesn't it? To keep things going. The sower, if he's going to be a sower, has to sow something. And uh, he sows the seed. 
that is provided by the water by the plants that have grown and uh, the sower himself is part of a cycle again the seed goes out in one direction doesn't it it doesn't go back in, oh, into his hand back into the bag it's going out and it has a purpose in going out and it provides more seed it goes to grow and to propagate and to provide more that's part of our life as well part of our role in life is to, to sow seed as believers we go out bearing precious seed we take the seeds of the gospel we take the seeds of truth we take the seeds of God's word and plant them in people's lives maybe by our words maybe by our actions maybe by our lives the seed gets planted the seed gets transferred and it has the chance to have an impact to propagate to provide to grow more the seed has the full potential within itself to reproduce itself several times over but also bread to the eater there's those that give out there's those that propagate and there's those also that desperately need to receive and actually the point is the sower is also an eater oh I never touch the stuff myself I just sow seed I never actually eat anything no that's not true is it the sower is sowing the seed to grow for bread yet will feed himself <coughs> but the sower will have no strength to go out if he hasn't be, had something himself first we were just uh, listening literally a minute or so ago to the uh, the message from the missions office in Baltimore uh, Pastor Shibeli, various ones, Pastor Ellis, Pastor Ronaldo and Pastor Gary, Ula, Purio, it's great to see their faces um, and, and the Lama as well, the Christmas Lama Listen, uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about it's probably online, you can go and find it Baltimore. missions office, Christmas message but anyway um, but yeah what was Pastor Chabelli saying keep receiving receive keep receiving is that's the how we are able to give out we receive life and we're able to give out life we receive the life of the Lord Jesus Christ we receive the word of the living God and we're able to give out the Lord Jesus Christ we're able to give out the life of God we're able to give out his word of power because we've received it ourselves seed to the sower and bread to the eater to those that give out but also to those that keep receiving keep being fed What did Jesus say so often to his disciples? Take, eat. Remember that, the Last Supper. Come and dine. You know, there's this idea that uh, to be religious you have to be, oh, you have to give up things. And, oh, you know, don't do, don't go in for that. And, uh, you know, the Lord Jesus Christ, he was, he was accused of of being a glutton and a wine bibber why? because he was out with people sharing life with them, sharing food with them celebrating with them the last supper with fervent desire of desire to eat this with you and uh, on the seashore in John 21 children have you any meat come and dine come and fellowship come and receive something there's 
fish cooking here and a fire with co with bread laying on the coals. You know, this is this is it. Seed to the sower, bread to the eater. Is there anybody watching there that eats? Is anybody eating anything today? You know, this is the thing we're all eaters, aren't we? We all eat something eventually. And if we don't, well, we don't do very well. But we're called to be receivers. We're called to keep receiving life. We're called also to be part of the action. To go out and sow what God has given us. We're called to pass it on. And the point is that this, it accomplishes God's purpose. The Lord Jesus Christ was sent out as the word of God. To accomplish just as the rain and the snow they accomplish their purpose the purpose that God has for them so the Lord Jesus Christ he accomplished his purpose when he was sent to this earth he came to love people he came to serve people he came to lay down his life for people What do we read him say? Uh, John 17. Verse 4 I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify thou me with thine own self with the glory which I had with thee before the world Jesus is making it clear there that he's God I was with you before the world began you know that's pretty clear that, that's not it's not, it's not um, open to interpretation that is but you know what I finished the work that you gave me to do. So in nineteen thirty it is finished. It is complete. The word of God was sent out with a purpose to accomplish the purpose for which God pleased it. The Lord Jesus Christ came to accomplish the purpose which pleased the Lord. You know, we all have a purpose as well. And we can, we can uh, be like the Lord and accomplish the purpose that we are sent to, that we are given to do. I was thinking about that actually uh, in Second Timothy 4, Paul says uh, in verse 6, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course. And I've kept the faith. The Lord Jesus Christ said, I've finished the work that you gave me to do. And Paul said, you know what? I've fought a good fight. I've finished my course. He talks about, um, a lot about athletes actually, yes. Paul was sharing often in, in the in the Greco-Roman world, even though he himself was a Jew, he was in the Roman Empire. It was at the time when actually Olympic games were very well known and very at the forefront of people's minds. And often he uses those illustrations of of, those, of ones that fight. You know, he's like, I'm not one that fights into the air. You know, I'm not one beating the air. And another time, you know, he talks about the you know the the, the image of the soldier, the image of the farmer, the image of a of a runner running a race. He says, "I've finished my course. I 
I've run the race well. I've put up a good fight. And I've kept my faith. And these are the things that uh, that he did by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not in his own strength. Not because he was a wonderful person. But because the Lord Jesus Christ worked through him. And it's the same for us. We don't do this out of our own strength, out of our own religious fervor, out of our own goodness, our own desire, our own zeal. No. But the Lord Jesus Christ, if we are open, He uses us. He works through us. He speaks through us. And we are just open to Him, to be used by Him to put up a good fight to finish the, the course to walk in the purpose that we're here we're put on the earth for God put us on the earth for a purpose if you're still on the earth and you're still alive God still has a purpose for you never forget that don't take it for granted don't think that your life is meaningless or that you don't count actually you have a great value in the kingdom of God you have great value to those that love you this is the, the purpose that God has for each one of us in the same way that he sent the Lord Jesus Christ to the earth with a purpose Jesus said in John 10 the thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy but I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly that was one of the purposes that Jesus had in coming with abundant life bringing us life giving us life he was the source of life we read that, didn't we, in John chapter 1. In him was life. And the life was the light of man. The light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. And you know, in the later in that chapter, we read. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory as the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth and John bare witness of him and cried saying this is he of whom I spake for he cometh he that cometh after me is preferred before me for he was before me and of his fullness have we all received and grace for grace that was one of the other purposes that the Lord Jesus Christ was sent to the earth to manifest God's grace the fullness of God's grace that we would receive grace and truth that we would understand it that we would see the, the, the completeness in the Lord Jesus Christ of God's, of God's life the Lord Jesus Christ to the earth with a purpose And he, he prospered in the thing that he was sent for. That we would receive life. That we would know God's work. That we would know God's ways. That we would know God's heart. And that we would be able to receive grace. Greater grace. Deeper grace. Grace for grace. That's God's heart in sending Jesus 
to the cross in bringing him out of the tomb in putting him in our hearts and in our minds and in our lives is that we would receive mercy, forgiveness, truth and grace from the hands of a loving God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, tonight. We thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness, your life and your truth and all of your ways. And we thank you, most of all, for your grace, your abundant grace. Thank you, Lord, that you came, that we could have life, that we could be healed, that we could be forgiven. Thank you, Lord, that you came to bring that life to the earth, a life that was unknown to man without your spirit, without your presence in our lives. Thank you, Lord, that you've made that manifest. You've finished the work, you've completed it, and you've made it manifest to all mankind. We worship you tonight, and we thank you, Lord, for the impact of your life in our life and we thank you also that our life in your life can affect the lives of others touch now Lord we pray and Lord we ask now if there's anyone watching we never know who is watching on Facebook anyone could be watching on YouTube even more people could be watching but Lord we ask if there is anyone out there who has never received the Lord Jesus Christ as their Saviour, we just ask now that this would be the time when they say, Lord, I want to know what it means to trust you. I want part of that finished work. I want your grace. And I want your word to be sent forth into my life to heal me to deliver me from my destructions to protect me to forgive me to restore me but that I could flourish and bring forth fruit that I could bring bud seed and bread that my life could be a blessing to someone because of the way that the Lord Jesus Christ has blessed me, healed me, forgiven me, restored me. Thank you, Lord. I desire you to be my Savior now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, okay, so we're going to sign off now. It's good to open God's word. It's good to knock these thoughts around in our mind. Please come and join with us tomorrow night at the school play. Please come on Sunday, either in the morning at 11 o'clock or in the afternoon at 2. Uh, we're not bothered. Just come and join with us. Come and sing a carol. Uh, come and have a traditional Christmas uh, in an untraditional way. Uh, but the master of all, God bless you. Take care and speak to you soon.